Welcome to the future where the glass is half full and you'll need new glasses, where you'll be jumping from conclusions. The past is a no, and a new future is born. Never before in history has so much meant so little to so many. AD on the radio. You know what? I've always been really good, I thought. I've always been really good at spotting when someone is gay. My gaydar is uh, effective, highly tuned. I know of which I speak. And I think I was good at spotting people that were gay before I even knew what gay was. I'll never forget. I went to school with this one kid. And <clears throat> the school that I went to in England was sort of a transitional type of thing. Like, it was an American school, but it was in England, and people would send their kids there for a couple of years because they knew that they were only going to be in England on a limited contract before they moved back to America or wherever the hell they were from, and they wanted to keep their kid in a similar cu- curriculum. Like, if you take an American kid and you put him in English school, well, it's just going to be a big mess, especially if you take that kid and then a couple of years later send him back to America or her back to America. It's just a different thing. So as, <clears throat> as a result, the vast majority of the kids that I went to school with were sort of transient in their nature. Your friendships would only last for a couple years, but if they lasted beyond that, it was cool because you had friends dotted all across America and then eventually all across the globe. But there were a couple of us that wound up being lifers where, you know, your parents moved to England and then they get comfortable there. Uh, if you're, if your family was like mine, I, I think when I first arrived in England, that was like my fifth school in one year. And my parents were like, no more moving the kid around. <laughs> he, he's on the verge of a, some sort of meltdown. I was just sitting back of the class, be labeled a slow kid, mutter to myself about how everything sucked. I did that for a couple of years. And my parents sort of looked at me and went, maybe we should try and stay put. And we did. And there were a couple of us, a couple families that were there for the long haul. But I'll never forget in like the second or third grade, there was this one guy and <clears throat> There was this one guy, and I remember we had to take turns making the morning announcements at the front of the room. And there was something about this guy where I just knew, hey, he's uh, different from me. He's differently motivated than me. He walked differently. He talked differently. And I didn't know exactly what it was. But to me, I looked at him and I went, oh, that's interesting. That guy, well, he's a boy. But some of the things he does remind me a lot more of a girl. And I really had no idea beyond that what any of that meant. I don't think I knew what it was to be gay at the time. Or any of that sort of thing. And I didn't make anything of it. I was just like, oh, he's a, he's a boy, but he acts a little bit more like a girl sometimes. <clears throat> that was all I noticed. Cut to years later. He's not dating the way the rest of us were starting to date. And he's hanging out more with girls. And he mentions in passing his girlfriend. He mentions in passing liking girls. But I always just saw him hanging out with the girls. I always saw him as more one of the girls. And this is my young mind. <clears throat> and at that point, at that point, I went, huh. I think he's probably gay. I wonder if he knows he's gay or not. I, I don't know. And really, I made nothing of it. Zip, zing, nada. And then cut to a year or two after most of us got out of high school. I was like, I always thought that guy was gay. I remember talking to my mom. She's like, oh, yeah, no, I talked to his mom a little while ago. He's very happy. He's, uh, you know, got a girlfriend and he's going to college. I was like, girlfriend? Really? Wow. I, I, wow. Go figure. And then cut to a few more years later, Facebook becomes a thing. And there he is. Happily living with a guy very open about his sexuality. And I was like, I knew it. I knew it. 
I, I, I knew it. And I heard through the grapevine, through a friend of a friend, I was like, yeah, you know, he, he had a girlfriend there for a second. And they're like, no, no, he didn't. He told his mom he had a girlfriend. And I was just like, you know, there were very few of us that knew each other from childhood before sexuality is even a thing. And I remember thinking about his life and all the years that I'd known him. And suddenly I became very sad for him. And... Well, I'll tell you why next. Thank you so much for joining the show. At ADSXE is where you can tweet me. At Funk FM, that's where you can get a hold of Funkhauser. Real radio, 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 radio. 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 104.1. Where the left and right come together for fundamental truths. AD on the radio, on Twitter at ADSXE. Uh, <clears throat> first and foremost, you got to excuse the uh, the multitude of frogs in my throat this morning. Yeah, what's wrong with you? Uh, I, uh, I went into the studio the other day to do my show, as one does, and... My face brushes against the microphone that, like, the whipping boy on the morning show uses. We use the same microphone because he is saddled with being the board op. The actual morning guy doesn't like to use, doesn't like to run his own boards. <clears throat> so, like, this, this guy does it. And my face brushes against the microphone, and the microphone is wet. And I'm like, oh, disgusting. Oh, revolting. Oh, just come on, man. Come on. Did you go straight to the doctor? Ah, uh, well... No, I just wiped myself off, wiped the microphone off. I was like running super late. I had a bunch of stuff to do. I was coming in from a meeting. I'm like, yay. This, is, this, by the way, is the joy of middle management. Like, hey, you're going to have a whole bunch of other stuff to do. And, uh, you know, we want you to be incredibly careful with everything that you do. But you realize that you're going to be literally running from one room to another to try and accomplish these tasks. So sometimes, sometimes you don't have time to do the things that you would do, like run straight to the doctor after your face touched a wet microphone. But... As revolting as it might have been, I, I was just like, fine, I'll just continue on with my life as one does. And then, and then, <clears throat> you know how some morning shows, you run little clips of what they talked about that morning throughout the day. You ever heard that, mm -hmm. Funkhauser? Oh, yeah, the, the recycler or whatever the hell sure. they call it. Like, hey, if you missed our stunning wit and brilliance Last this morning, time on the show. here's some more of it to interrupt AD's show. Um, <clears throat> anyways, in one of those, I hear, in one of those, I hear... I'm sick, which is like the guy who I share a microphone with actively complaining about being sick on the air. I realized his spit touched my face the moment I got into the studio. I was like, oh, you stupid. But by the way, let me preface this by saying a nicer guy you could not hope to meet. Like, this is the sort of dude that you want your sister dating if you have a sister. He's a very nice individual. But when it comes to giving a crap about the health and well-being oh, of his no! yeah uh, when it comes to giving a crap about the health and well-being of his coworkers mine is several million on a score of t a possible score of 10 for that guy and like i was like oh no his spit touched my face and he's sick it's as if he spat in my face this is disgusting and then 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 oh my god woke up achy sweaty <clears throat> various arm ugh. so I am. Uh, I'm going to. He's going down the tubers. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to vigorously beat him about the face and neck until he sees the error of his ways when I get out of the studio today. But that's not the point of the uh, <clears throat> point of the story. The point of the story is I go to school with this kid. I go to school with this kid who, before I even knew what gay was, before I even knew what gender identity was, before I ever even gave any thought to that whatsoever, I noticed that this one kid. When we had to take turns giving the morning announcements, when he got up and he announced what was on, you know, the lunch menu for that day and everything that we needed to know, I was like, that guy, that's interesting. That guy, he's not like me. He's, he's a boy, but some of the things he does remind me of girls. We get a little older, and I see that he talks about girlfriends but none of them go to our school. And he definitely hangs out with girls, but it's always in a very friendly way. Like, I never see him with a group of his bros. He's always with girls. And then 
gets into college. And I hear through the grapevine, my mom talks to his mom. Oh, yeah, 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 he's got a girlfriend. I was like, really? That guy? I always kind of thought, well, maybe I'm wrong about this sort of thing. Don't give it any thought. A few more years later, I think about it a lot when I find out that he's happy and in a committed relationship with another guy. And old class friend and I are talking about it. I was like, you know, I, just, I thought he was dating a girl in, in, uh, in college. I wonder if he was having a hard time figuring things out or trying things or, you know, not for me to judge. I certainly don't know what it was like to be him while he was maybe. And she was like, oh, no, he was never dating a girl. He told his mom that, but he was never dating a girl. And I was like, oh, man. <clears throat> and for the first time, for the first time, I actively felt really, really bad for someone that I knew was gay. Because this is the only guy, I think, that I knew. Like I said, my school is very transient. Most of the kids that I knew, I knew for two years, three years, and then they would go back to wherever the hell they were from. And, you know, you don't really get to be around too many kids for the long haul. But this guy was one of the lifers, the way my family was. I'd been to, like, five schools in one year by the time we landed in England. And I was just like this stuttering mess in the back of the class told that I was slow and I was it, then things all turn around and I, I wound up just fine but something was taking a toll on my young mind and my parents thought we should maybe try and stay put for a little while the boy doesn't seem to be doing well so they made the decision to stay at this school for the long haul and for whatever reason this kid's <clears throat> parents did as well so that was the first instance in my life of knowing someone for a long period of time, before I knew what gay was, before I'm guessing he knew what gay was. And like I said, I feel like I've always had impeccable gaydar, just because I can look at someone and go, they're different from me. They're differently motivated than me. They like some different stuff than I do. And I remember thinking, I remember thinking, man... I like this kid. He was a nice kid. We weren't besties or anything. But if I would have known in the 6th, 7th, 8th grade, when life is confusing enough, when essentially all your hormones are being carbonated, when, and man, if there's a period of my life that I wouldn't repeat for any money, it's probably like 13 years old. God, that's no fun. But I remember thinking... And feeling sad for this kid. Because I was like, he had to hide who he was this whole time. He had to not be himself. And maybe he knew what was up. Maybe he didn't. Maybe he didn't figure himself out until later on in life. But if I had it figured out since the third grade, I'm going to guess that he might have had an idea. I just remember thinking to myself, poor guy. Poor guy. He wasn't given an opportunity to be himself until much later in life. What does that do to a person? Well, it can do some horrible things, and we'll talk about them next. For more stimulation and less irritation, 9 out of 10 doctors choose... KPRC AM 950, Houston's more stimulating talk radio. Don't get the blues, get all the news. We mean all of you guys out there in Radio Land. All aboard! He's back. AD on the radio. Give it up, yeah. Give it up, yeah. Bring this on, bring this on. Come on, come on. So, what does it do to somebody? What does it do to somebody to not be allowed to be themselves? What the hell is up with that? This kid that I went to school with, man, I felt so bad for him. Because, and I'm just going to go out on a limb and assume that he knew he was gay. He realized who he was and what was up. Because I knew that there was something different about him since before I knew that gay was a thing. In the third grade, I was like, "That, that guy's different than me. He does some stuff that's more like a girl, but he's a boy. That was all I thought about. Like I said, didn't even know what gay was, but I could spot that there was something different about him. Cut two years and years later, to the surprise of no one whatsoever, he was gay. And I remember thinking, 
I remember thinking, maybe, maybe it was because of his parents. Maybe he was afraid of what his classmates would make of it or do with the information that he was gay. Maybe, maybe he didn't know, but I'm going to guess he knew. I thought to myself, man, that guy had to wait till he was like in his 20s to just be who he was. Hmm. I remember feeling really, really sad because it was surprising to absolutely no one. I mean, I didn't talk about the fact that he seemed different than me to anyone else. I just kind of took it in. And then, you know, as you get older, you're like, that, that guy's definitely gay, right? Yeah, I think so. All right, cool. Really didn't think anything of it. And maybe, maybe, like, I hung out with an, a, a, an especially enlightened bunch of kids. But there wasn't one of us that would have, I mean, A, we already assumed that he was gay. B, we wouldn't have thought any less of him. He would have been completely accepted by the people he went to school with had he made the decision to be open about his sexuality at the time. And so I thought that was sad. I thought he could have been surrounded by friendship and support. At least in his immediate circle of acquaintances at school. Don't know what situation he had going on at home. But whatever the case may be, I was just like, oh man, man, I wish, I wish that guy would have known. I wish that guy would have known that we would have just not had any problem with him or not even thought any differently of him when he was growing up. What does it do to somebody just to be afraid to be yourself throughout those formative years when you're 13 years old, when every little issue seems like the size of Mount Everest? What is something like that, an actual issue? The inability to be who you are due to a person. And I bring this up for a reason. See, up until this weekend, there was no explanation for why former Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez threw away a really promising career and his freedom by committing murder. There was no motive, and I remember people thinking that it might have been gang-related or something like that. It was also unclear why he committed suicide in his cell. I mean, he was looking at a life sentence. So, on the one hand... People were maybe connecting the dots in that way. Well, a new detail has surfaced that could explain both of these things. And this is speculation. This is conjecture. So we're dealing with a what-if scenario here. But according to reports, he left three, count them, one, two, three suicide notes. One addressed to his fiance, one to his four-year-old daughter, and one to his prison boyfriend. Now, apparently, Hernandez was bisexual. Which really doesn't matter in and of itself. However, there's now talk that he had a long-time sexual relationship with a guy from high school. A different guy, not the guy from prison. Right before he was arrested, Aaron Hernandez moved around a lot of money. He moved money into three accounts right before he was arrested for murder. One for his fiance, one for his daughter, <clears throat> and the one where the most money went was for that high school friend, whoever that might be. The idea is that Odin Lloyd, the man who he killed, somehow knew about his sexuality or the boyfriend. And the idea is that Hernandez may have killed him because he thought Lloyd would out him and expose his secret life. Now, let's be clear on this. In no way, shape, or form, in no way, shape, or form, am I excusing the behavior of murder horrible, awful thing. One of the deadly sins. And 
anybody who commits murder is exactly that, a murderer, inexcusable. In no way, shape, or form am I attempting to sympathize with this situation. Because what he did was egregious, awful, wrong. To end someone else's life in that way is wrong. And by the way, feel free to place the word allegedly in front of all of this because it is at this stage in the game and maybe it always will be speculative. But it made me think, doesn't it make you think? Had there been a greater ease around the idea of homosexuality and bisexuality, a man might be alive today. If it was okay for Aaron Hernandez to be bisexual in the sporting community, in the football community, in the clique that he ran with, to his family, to everybody that came into contact with him, were his sexuality not an issue, something that he wanted to keep quiet, something that he could have told his fiance about? Hey, uh, you know, if we're going to get married, there's something you should know. And then you got to make a decision about whether or not that's okay with you. And we're going to discuss how we live as a married couple. Were these easier conversations to have? In a similar situation, a man might not be dead. And look, if this guy, Odin Lloyd, was blackmailing him or threatening to out him and using his sexuality against him, <coughs> that is also in and of itself morally reprehensible behavior. He didn't deserve to be murdered, obviously, but neither of the folks that we're talking about here, if any of the speculation is correct, are good guys. Aaron Hernandez, terrible human being. He murdered someone. Not okay. Let's be very clear about that. But if this was over sexuality, over a little issue of, ah, this is who I am. This is, this is me. Things could have wound up in a very different spot. And we know about this. This is incredibly high profile. But look, two people are dead now. Mothers have lost sons to something senseless. Family members grieve. A little girl grows up without a father. And by the way, growing up with Aaron Hernandez as a dad, probably not the greatest thing in the world because he was a murderer. But do you see what I'm getting at here? We know about this because it's front page headlines. <laughs> no, see what I did there? I made it imply, I implied that there's pages like people still read print publications. It's top of your browser headlines. It's alerts to your phone headlines. It's a topic that's on everyone's mind. And I hope that what we take away from this, because it's very high profile, but you see the damage that someone's inability to accept themselves and a society's inability or peers' ability to accept someone has caused. You see the loss of life that it's caused. And, look, you don't have to understand. You don't have to relate to it. I cannot relate to the motivation of a gay guy. I can't. Don't understand it. Don't get it. But that's okay because it's not me. It's not for me to understand. It's not for me to get. But there was a man who did... So much for equality and acceptance in the world of sports. Who once said something that I think we could all bear in mind. What do we take away from this situation? That there's real pain, there's real suffering, and in this case there's real loss of life around 
our lack of upset, uh, lack of upset, uh, <laughs> of acceptance of who other people are. And it doesn't have to do with liking or relating to or understanding some things that you're never going to understand. Some things you're never going to relate to. But we all know what respect is and we all know how to give it. I'm not concerned with your liking or disliking me. All I ask is that you respect me as a human being. The great Jackie Robinson. All right, Funkhauser. <coughs> Before I hack up another lung, let's do some news. Why, why, don't you, why don't you do some of this talking stuff that we got going on? Yeah. there. <laughs> oh, my God. This is my witness news. In no way, shape, or form, fair, and certainly not balanced. And now, super producer to the stars, Barry Funkhauser. Barry Funkhauser. Barry Funkhauser. Here I am. Uh-huh. Barry Funkhauser. Barry Funkhauser. Hello. Hey, Funkhauser, you sound a hey. little, a little different. Oh, I do? You noticed? You got a different microphone, right? I have a different everything now. Oh? Well, breaking news. Uh I've struck out on my own as a small business owner. Oh, oh, wow. So you've bailed on your job. I'm out-ski. You are are out-ski. But you're on the road. You're still producing this. Oh, yeah. This is now my full-time job. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know. What have I done? That means I have to make some money and pay you. Oh, All no. right. Okay. Well, let's. Uh, well, hold on. So let, let's just be totally clear on this, because like we were off the air for a week while uh, all this was happening, and uh, what has happened is that super producer to the stars Barry Funkhauser has struck out on his own. I love this. I love the entrepreneurial spirit. I think it's so awesome. I especially love that I still get to call you my producer. That was like my first concern when I heard that you were doing this. And then everything else I thought was like, man, this is <clears throat> this, regardless of who you voted for, is the type of thing that could make America great again. People <laughs> going, I'm going to take my life and my career in my own two hands, and I'm going to swim or sink based on my own merits. And Funkhouse, you are going for it. You are now a business owner, and you've got big, big things in the work. We can't talk about some of the things you got in the works, yes. but you, there's some big sort of like national stuff, and you're going to be doing things that impact, well, you were telling me, huge, the whole of the things. country. All over the country, huge, big names, big brands, big websites, a lot of things, huge. And so you you struck out on your own, and you're now, <clears throat> where are you doing the show from? Well, this morning, uh-huh. today, this afternoon, I'm doing it from my mom's bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> You're off to it. Hey, come on, man. I'm- Funkhauser like sold me this thing. He was like, "Man, it's, you don't understand. We've got so much stuff lined up. It's going to be huge. It. I mean, really, it's my career move, but it's going to be good for your show. <laughs> the things that are going on in my world, you won't freaking believe it. I can't tell you all of them, but I can tell you that. Well, get ready to go global, son, because that's where the Funkhauser train is headed. I was like, wow, that sounds really impressive. Cut to first day of the show. You're in your mom's bedroom. Well, yeah. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you got to get it. You got to do what you do to get off the ground. Isn't that I really, how you start? Isn't that how <clears throat> Steve Jobs started? Uh, something like that. But I got to say, Funkhauser, congratulations on taking that big leap. We are all in awe of your bravery and I know it's going to pay off for you. Thank you. You wait until you get washed away. Rio. Radio. Rio. Radio. 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 Now, more AD on the radio. All right, Funk Hazard, let's do a little bit of news. All right, do, 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 do. I only have one button so far. You know, small business owner has to be, you know, economical here. So hold on a second with the news. There we are. All right. Kid Rock <laughs> proposed to his longtime love. Oh, well. Congratulations to Kid Rock and Schlitz. <laughs> <Whatever>. <laughs> no, actually, Kid Rock is like, he's 
I guess he's he's engaged to her now, but I think it's some someone completely age appropriate that he went to high school with back in the day. Like I think huh. he tried doing the whole Hollywood thing for there for a second, and went, well, that didn't that didn't work out. Too. He too had well. his fifteen minutes. It ran out. Oh, Kid Rock had longer than fifteen minutes. You know what I really love about Kid Rock? I mean, any number of things. I love the fact that Kid Rock <clears throat> can be political, but all embracing of, and everyone everyone's all bent out of shape that he went to the white house with ted nugent and sarah palin and there is low-hanging comedic fruit there but i'm gonna leave it alone because i really like what kid rock is all about when it comes to politics and that is he's firm in his belief he knows what he thinks and he's not afraid to say it but he's also very big very big on saying hey 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 we can be friends you know just because you and i voted differently it's not that it's just politics it's you know, the big, big freaking deal. It's not the be all end all. It's not it's not what life is all about. He made that movie with Sean Penn, who is staunchly liberal. And, uh, you know, the whole thing had to do with how they could still be friends and get along, even though they voted completely differently. Kid Rock was a guy who endorsed Obama in the first election, went, eh, I don't, I didn't like Obama's first four years. Now I'm flipping. I'm going to be endorsing someone else. And you know what? He said that, uh, he bumped into Obama a couple times after he flipped on him, and Obama was cool with him, and he was cool with Obama. And you know what I really appreciate about that? I love the fact that Kid Rock has come to the table with strong political beliefs, yet the thing that overrides all of it is, hey, we can still get along. Is love in his heart for everybody, regardless of who they vote for. And it's just a weird day in American politics where the stone-cold pimp of the nation, ba with the ba, Mr. I am the bull god, uh, the cowboy of the West Coast is the dude that is the voice of reason in American politics. So go figure. But, yeah, uh, he gets a pass from me on, on the goofy political stuff he does because, you know what? <clears throat> he doesn't let it get in the way of him getting along with other people. I think, like I said, we're in a weird place in American politics <laughs> where Kid sure Rock are, is your role model. But there you go. Wow. Should have saved my CD. <laughs> and you know the other thing I like about Kid Rock is like he's completely okay with where he's at. Like he understands, he gets it. I think I, I think I heard him talk to Howard Stern a little while ago, and he was like, "What's a new album like?" He's like, "Oh man, my new album is great." But Howard, I'm so irrelevant. Like you know, people come and see my shows, but 16 year old kids aren't checking for a new Kid Rock record. You know, he was like, he he is completely comfortable with what he's accomplished, who he is, and where he's at in his life. I appreciate that. Go on. Fox News will give Bill O'Reilly a $25 million severance. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. The, there are many things that are surprising about the situation with Bill O'Reilly. But to me, far and away, the most shocking thing, the thing that blew my ever-loving mind with this whole situation was the amount of money Bill O'Reilly is getting paid to not work. He's getting a $25 million severance package. Nobody could believe that. They're like, Bill O'Reilly's getting a $25 million severance package? Hmm. Hopefully that's the last time we have to talk about Bill O'Reilly's package, but nevertheless, it's <laughs> kind of crazy. What do they call that when you get a when you get fired and you get a whole bunch of money, or when you stop working for a company, like you're a big deal? What do they call it? Uh, uh, go ahead. No, no, no. Like There's a name for it. Oh, I um, thought you were... No, it's not a joke. Um, Isn't that severance? Severance? No, but there's like a, <clears throat> a business term. I remember reading, I remember my dad had a book about it. Uh, the, how big is your parachute or what color is your, what color is your, golden parachute. That's oh, what it's called. It's called it a is. golden, when you get a big payoff to not work anymore, it's called a golden parachute. Hmm. Which also sounds like something Donald Trump allegedly requests from Russian hookers, but nevertheless. <laughs> so wait a second. How much do they give Roger Ailes over at Fox News? Uh... Oh, man, I don't remember. I think it was, hold on, let me see, $40 million. <laughs> Fox News gave $40 million to Roger Ailes. He was out amid allegations of sexual harassment. Um, so 40 plus 25, $65 million. <laughs> Just an average day. Uh, $65 million Fox News spent on a couple of sexual predators. Dude. Uh, even Oscar Mayer spends less money on pigs. Go on. Bill O'Reilly is resuming his podcast. Oh. Oh. That means his Fox News fans can hear him pontificate again. Except for the ones who need help turning on their computer. Go on. 
Ann Coulter is furious about the University of California rescheduling a speech. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, also infuriating, Ann Coulter. Everything at all times, ever. <laughs> Go on. Richard Simmons just spoke out publicly for the first time in three years. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yep. Everyone was like, is he dead? What's going on? We were worried he's, about him. Yeah, he spoke publicly for the first time in three years. And. As you would have expected, his statement focused entirely on the pickup truck that he's currently restoring, his passion for craft beer, and the NFL draft. Good for him. Go on. Go Packers! <laughs> Just, okay. In her interview... There's the line. There's Mark Hauser Cross. <laughs> Diane Sawyer. See what I do? See how I dance around the line? You're the one that... I'm the one who's supposed to walk up to the edge, and you're the one that's supposed what to be pulling me back. What did I say? I didn't say anything. One day of working for yourself, and you're... All, okay. All right. <laughs> Go on. In her interview with Diane Sawyer, Caitlyn Jenner warned that it would be inappropriate for anyone to ask her questions about having her male genitalia removed. Yeah. You know, okay. So you and I have talked a lot on this show about Caitlyn Jenner and the gender reassignment procedures that she's gone through since she stopped being Bruce Jenner. And I've made it clear, and if you don't remember, if you didn't hear, Make it clear again. I thought Bruce Jenner was a lousy person. I think Caitlyn Jenner is a lousy human being. However, I really appreciate the high profile nature of what Caitlyn Jenner is doing. And this is the reason I appreciate it. If you, and we've talked about this over and over again, but it bears repeating because this is important. It involves human life. If you look at straight people, Guys that are into girls, girls that are into guys. Suicide rate around 7%. If you're gay, well, that goes up to like 14, 15%, I think. But if you are confused about your gender, the attempted suicide rate is almost 50%. Which is why I think Caitlyn Jenner sold the hell out when talking to Diane Sawyer, and we'll get to that next. Leave the stimulation to the professionals. Everyone is so smart. KBRC, more stimulating talk radio. There's something happening here, and you should know what it is. <laughs> the dumbing up of America. Now, more AD on the radio. So you and I have talked about this a bit. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Crackly. So sick. Just disgusting. Remember I was sick for like a month? Yeah, yeah. Watch out. Yeah, I know. Anyways, you and I have talked about this a bunch. Caitlyn Jenner, I think, is a lousy human being. I thought Bruce Jenner was a lousy human being. However, I really appreciated the fact that Bruce Jenner became Caitlyn Jenner <clears throat> in such a public sort of way. Why? Well, as we were discussing before and as we've talked about in the past, this is important. It involves human life. It bears repeating. But if you're a straight guy or girl, the attempted suicide rate, around 7%. If you're gay, it jumps up, I think, to around 14 or 15%. Don't quote me on, this, on those numbers, but I do know that there is an increase. The important number that we're looking at, though, is if you have an issue with gender identity. Gender dysphoria is the technical term for it. If you feel as though you are born <clears throat> with the wrong situation going on south of the equator and you want to do something about it, if you're one of those folks, well, the attempted suicide rate jumps up to nearly 50%. It's a rare situation. Gender dysphoria is... I think, unfamiliar and scary to a lot of people because they don't understand it because <clears throat> you can go your whole life without knowingly meeting someone or having a conversation about this. If there's one thing that we've discussed over and over again, it's that prejudice doesn't often stand up to contact. If you are prejudiced against someone else because of their sexuality or because of their religion or because of who they are or what color of skin they were born into or what country they were born in, nine times out of ten, the best thing that you can do to solve that question of prejudice is get a little exposure to one another. Prejudice does not stand up to contact, nine times out of ten. 
But it's a rare situation and one that isn't talked about all that much. So getting that contact to destroy the idea of prejudice is very, very difficult. It's not something that you just run across every single day. And therefore, things like the attempted suicide rate of people that suffer from gender dysphoria, and I say suffer because it's a situation that causes suffering, not because it's an affliction that you suffer from. But people that are suffering through the experience of feeling that way, uh, attempted suicide rate of close to 50%. Anything that brings that number down is a good thing, which is why I was all in favor of Caitlyn Jenner being incredibly public about this. Anything that makes it less scary, less unfamiliar, more normal to people, to where they go, all right, that's them, that's not me, but that's a thing, okay, I get it. <clears throat> Anything that makes people go, oh, yeah, I heard about that, as opposed to, what? How strange. You're strange. <clears throat> is a good thing. And this is why I think that Caitlyn Jenner 100 million percent sold out. What the hell, man? What the hell? In Caitlyn Jenner's 2020 interview with Diane Sawyer this past Friday, just gone by, she said she does not want to be asked about losing her man parts. Diane Sawyer asked about the gender reassignment surgery, and Caitlyn said... I wasn't less of a woman the day before the surgery than I was the day after I had the surgery because that did not define who I am as a human being. She said she has no regrets whatsoever about the surgery and then warned Diane that transgender people, excuse me, warned Diane that transgender people are the only people allowed to bring up that surgery. Ah, what'd you do? No, you're creating an us and them situation. The, uh, all, all the all the pushing that you've done for normalization and acceptance that allows people to get on with their lives and lowers that potential attempted suicide rate. What do you just No, The only people that get to ask about that are other transgendered people. It's, and she said it's not appropriate for anyone else to bring it up. Now, it is 100 percent Caitlyn Jenner's prerogative. What she does and does not talk about. Absolutely. Got it. That's not what I have a problem with. What I have a problem with is Caitlyn Jenner saying it's not appropriate for people to bring it up. And then writing about it in her memoir. Oh, yeah, there's a book to sell. There's dollars to be made. Caitlyn talked about the surgery in her new memoir. That's the book she was promoting in the interview. She said, the book is about honesty, but that doesn't mean that in the future I have to talk about it, that I have to dwell on it. Mm. Do you see what I'm getting at here? Do you see why Caitlyn Jenner is a freaking sellout? No, 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 that's private. This is a matter of principle. The only people that are allowed to ask me about this are the people in the transgender community. This is for us, not them. Right there, you're drawing a line between people. That's a horrible thing to do. This is something that we're... You have done so much to stand up against. You have put yourself out there as an example of acceptance and of unity and as people just getting on with their lives. And then you go, no, 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 this is for us, not you. Now, I get that. It's not for me to dictate what Caitlyn Jenner feels comfortable talking about. But to be in a position like an interview with Diane Sawyer, you go to Diane Sawyer when there's something big to talk about. This is television that people actually watch. This is television that old people, old curmudgeon people that have very fixed ideas actually watch. This is an opportunity to get on national TV, a show that people still watch as opposed to TV, that thing that used to be in your life. This is a chance to make a huge difference. And you go, no, 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 not talking about it. No. No. But you can read all about it in my book. 50% suicide rate, give or take. A chance to do something about that. No, no, no. You can read all about it in my book, which you have to buy. The hell? What'd you just do? What did you just do? You had an opportunity to reach across boundaries. You had an opportunity to make things okay and accepted. And you had an opportunity to help lower that suicide rate, that mortality rate, that you had a chance to save human lives and you sold out that opportunity for a chance to shill your book. F you. Come on. Come on.
Ugh. Anyways, some highlights from the interview. She said that before she came out as Caitlyn, she did have something in her will saying that she wanted to be dressed as a woman at her funeral. She also said, I thought that most of my life, if I go and when I'm buried, yeah, I want to be dressed as her because that's the way I'm going to heaven. And if she had to come out all over again, she said she'd still do that Vanity Fair cover. She said, my kids thought, you know what, that's a little too much. But from my standpoint, I had suffered for 65 years. To have a beautiful shot of my authentic self was important. And then she also admitted she was going for a little bit of shock value. She also said she's happy and peaceful, doesn't plan on dating, doesn't see dating in her future. She hasn't been out on a date in two years. She said, I just have a lot of friends. My life revolves around my kids. Chance to save lives. No, no. Buy my book. It's not like I've gotten enough attention. It's not like I was a worldwide lauded Olympian. It's not like I was part of a massive reality television show. It's not like... <clears throat> I, w- I wasn't already a freaking gajillionaire. I wasn't already fawned over for any number of reasons. Buy my book. Ugh. Anyhow, shall we move along, Funkhauser? Any any more news? Yes, there are a few, I guess, if you mm-hmm. want some more news. Fine. Yeah, let's do some more news. Mm-hmm. Crank that news bed and let's get to it. Come on, come on, Internet. Let's get with it. There it is. Hey. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right I got to tell you. What? This bank of sound effects that Funkhauser has, <laughs> the music bits. Can you turn them up a little bit, Funkhauser? There you go. Yeah. Ah, that, yeah. That, that's comfortable. As, uh, as Funkhauser gets set up, <laughs> as Funkhauser <laughs> gets set up in his new situation, where he's like, oh, man, big things are happening. I'm going independent. I've got going to have my own studio. We're going to do that. And I get into the studio this morning. No, no, no. Keep, keep the, the news bed up. This, in my mind, is news. And I'm like, wow. Funkhauser, everything's like the same. I would never know that you're in your mom's bedroom doing yeah. this. Uh-huh. You outlined a slightly different scenario when you said you were going out on your own. Uh-huh. Um, but nevertheless, your mom's bedroom sounds good. Now... You uh, please understand the depth of Funkhauser and my friendship because I didn't make any jokes about. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you could the way, the way his mom's bedroom sounds. Uh, <laughs> also, I know your mom's like right around the corner, probably fixing you breakfast. So I don't want to like <laughs> offend her directly. Oh, she loves you. She's. <laughs> Anyways, nevertheless, I was very impressed. I got here. I was like Funkhauser. You. Uh, Wow, you're doing this up from your mom's bedroom. Cool, awesome. Mm-hmm. And then uh, what do I hear coming down the line? Yeah, Funkhauser's phone rings. And I was like, well, that's not okay. Why is that going through the board? What the hell is it? Why Why am I hearing that in my headphones? And it wasn't just like the phone ringing in the background. Like, this is audio. I was like, is that a new sound effect? He's like, no, that's my phone ringing. I was like, why is your phone Why is your phone patched into what we're doing? Are we taking phone calls that I don't know about? And he was like, no, no, I got I got all the sound effects on my phone. I was like, well, just uh, ghetto, but put it in airplane mode. <laughs> and uh, he was like, well, if I put it in airplane mode, I can't play it from Dropbox. I was like, okay. I was really, really impressed with everything that you did up until this point. But uh, yeah. really just leaning on the Internet. Yeah, yeah. Heavily. Today. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, we are coming Sorry. to you. Sorry. Nobody call today. me for an hour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please. While we're doing this, please don't call Funkhauser. By the way, like we could, this is how we can tell your friends don't listen to the show Funkhauser because if this was the case, you would have gotten eight calls. Be like, I'm totally going to mess with those guys now. Oh god. You know who was in the studio next to where where you you did um this show before this week, Funkhauser? Who 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 owned the golden microphone that was in the studio next to us? Was it Rush? Rush Limbaugh was our next door broadcasting neighbor. And make of Rush what you will. But it does lend a certain amount of credence to what you're doing. Well, in here we got uh, Rush Limbaugh and the next studio over, it's this new guy, AD. Yeah, you're Mm going to like him. Mm -hmm. Now we're not coming from next door to Rush Limbaugh's studio. We're coming from Funkhauser. What's it going to be like when we have guests from Funkhauser's bedroom? Funkhauser? Well, I'll have to hook up a second mic, apparently. (laughs) Yeah, just step over the laundry. Yeah, don't mind the cat. All right, cool. 
ring twice because we're hard of hearing up here. I like it. I like the idea of live from Funkhauser's mom's bedroom. <laughs> I think Wait till the great. band comes here. We can hey, get the Mark, band going. Mark Marin does his show from his garage. You know, like let's let's take it one step further. <laughs> we don't have a garage, but our producer has a mom, and that mom has a bedroom. And from there, our show is going to be coming. Well, no, there, there's like we'll be on an RV pretty soon. I think. What a recreational vehicle! Could you be crisscrossing America with this new project that you've taken? It's on? quite possible. Very high profile, impressive stuff. More like, detail on that as it, it develops. Yeah, Funkhauser signed a non disclosure agreement. Oh, but the yes, reason, they did. yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to back have to delete and save all of this. Bit. No, I don't think you do. As no, long we're as good. we're not specific about it, but Funkhauser has actually taken on a very big and very impressive project, and we're going to be playing a little bit of Where in the World Is Funkhauser? Da, 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 if everything. Da, da, da. Uh, Works out. So the uh, the the idea of getting <clears throat> people like the Red Hot Chili Peppers to go to Funkhauser's mom's bedroom. I got a backpack full of gear, man. I can go to their parents' bed- bedroom. <laughs> uh, oh, we're all out of show. Yay, we got through it, Funkhauser. Yay. Yay, pat yourself on the back for me. You did it. Yay. You're doing your thing. Get from yourself your mom's a hall, bedroom, would you and please? We are all proud of you. <laughs> 